<clears throat> okay, we're going to start with Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. It's, it says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service or men pleasers, but in sickness of heart, fearing God. Mainly what this is saying right here, this verse, not with eye service, like if your husband asks you to do something, you know, like when you tell little kids to do something, they give you the eye, like, it says not to do that. He's saying right here, don't give eye service, like, I'm going to go do it, but I'm showing you with my eyes, I don't like it. That's what he's saying right here. And then verse 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. So this is pretty self-explanatory here. Whatever you do, you're doing it unto the Lord. If your husband asks you to do something, you obey just like you would be obey God. But he says, whatever you do, do it with your heart. And don't do it like you're doing it unto him, your husband. Do it as you're doing it unto the Lord. Verse 24, Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye served the Lord Christ. There's going to be rewards. There's, there's, there's going to be different rewards for different things. Right here he's telling you, wives, a reward. Now, sometimes he rewards you now, here on earth, but sometimes your, your reward awaits you in heaven. So whether he does it now or in heaven, you're going to get one. And like I said before, sometimes us men, we're not always in the spirit. That means sometimes it's not going to be easy to submit to us because we're not in the spirit. But whether we're in the spirit or not, submit as unto the Lord. Because sometimes we can be hard to submit to. And believe it or not, if you go to the Lord about it, you would rather the Lord deal with us than you. I tell you right now, I would much rather Jody scream, holler, and fuss at me than the Lord. Okay, I can handle Jody. I can block her out. But the Lord deals with me, there ain't no way I'm blocking the Lord out. He's going to make sure I hear what he's got to say. And I can't run from him. With Jody, I can go out the door and take a drive. With the Lord, he's going to show me whether I like it or not. So women, give it to the Lord. If the man's not doing, walking in spirit, doing, saying things that is not of the Lord, pray to the Lord about it. If you want your husband to change and be a more godly man or closer to the Lord, pray for him. That's the best thing to do for your husband is to pray for him. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. For after this manner in no time, the holy women also who trusted in God adored themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any as any amazement. It's just saying again what I've been saying. Submit to your husband. Right here, Sarah, she called Abraham Lord. And that was with a little L. She didn't call him Lord with a capital L. Not Lord, like a spiritual Lord, but Lord knowing that he was over her. And this was Sarah, and she did this as 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 mothers to us, to the daughters. Y'all are daughters. Like Sarah, being of old age, she was an example for y'all to follow. Sometimes, us men, we put a capital L there, and that's where we mess up. You understand what I'm saying? When we try to act like Lord with a capital L, then we're messing things up. Yes, we are Lord, but we are Lord with a small L, just like Sarah called Abraham. But she did it as an example. It says, whose daughters ye are. So if you're a born-again Christian woman in here, you're a daughter of, of Sarah. And she's, she was an example. She is an example to you. Just like she obeyed Abraham, that's the way it should be done. For women who's listened to the CD and they're not sure what God wants for them, well, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women, now this is the Lord talking to single women, He's saying, I would that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So women, what the Lord wants for you is for you to be married, 
Now there are women who who are not married, but they're they're called not to be married. They're called into a ministry because they can have just like Paul. If a man is called and not to marry, then the Lord has given them he has he has given them the ability to go without lust. Because married men, I mean men, it's not that we lust. But like I said before, a long time ago, God made us to get excited over a woman, over her body. But the only body we should be able to see is our wife. Nowadays, women dress, and we can't help but, I mean, bikinis, bikini skirts, uh, short blouses. I mean, that's not what God wanted. That's not what God, that is not what He wants. So He made us to get excited over the body of a woman, but the only body we should be seeing is our wife. You understand what I'm saying? So he made us this way. Now we have to fight it because now women dress slutty. And I'm just going to say what it is. And you got Christian women who dress that way because I go to church and there's Christian women in church. They dress no different from women that are lost and in the world. The Bible says to, to, to avoid from tempting a brother or a sister to stumble. Okay. Now I got to go into church with almost blinders on. If I turn this way and I see something, now I gotta make sure I don't look that way again. And you shouldn't you shouldn't have to do that in church. We should not have to do that in church. Now for men it's a little it's a little more than women because women they're they're touched emotionally. They like emotional, they like, you know, we're men, we're more physical. So that's why it's harder on us. But God never meant for women to go around showing their bodies. So now we have the sin of lust, and that's something men, Christian men, we have to, when we see it, we need to turn. But right here, it says, young women, I want you to marry, and I want you to bear children. That's what he's saying. That's what he has for women. And he gave you exactly what you needed for, for having babies. All right, I've said this before. Uh, he's, giving you, <laughs> he's giving you two milk factories. They're right there on you. You don't even have to go to the store. You know, he's giving you an oven. You know, it's right there, made inside of you. So he's giving you everything you need to have a baby. Because he said at the beginning of Genesis, he wanted us to multiply. And he told the women to have babies. So women, if there's any women out there and you don't know what God wants for you, it's right here. He wants you to marry and have children. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becoming in his holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chastised keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Again, this is just a place showing women Love your husbands. Why, do, what is, why does God command women to love your husbands? Why is he he's saying women love your husbands? Because sometimes it's hard for y'all to love us. So now he's, he's got to tell you, hey, love your husband. That's why he put that in here. Also, what he says, that they may teach the young women. Now, women are, are, women are to teach women. And I'll show you uh, a little further down that women do not teach men. Women are to teach. Right here is the only place where women are to teach, and that's other women. That's just is just part of it. I'm going to show you further down, where women do not teach men. Like I've told you before, you can go from Genesis to Revelations. You will not find where the Lord had a woman over a man. Now there is one place. I believe it was a long time ago. I read it, but Esther, I think she took uh, took on the responsibility of a judge. But the only reason she took that was because a man, they couldn't find a man to take that responsibility. And the same thing goes on today. When the woman is in the, in the church with the children, and it's the, and it's the husband's, it's the father's responsibility, well, if he's not doing it, then the mother has to do it, right? And this is the same, that's why Esther did what she did, because there, there was not a man there to do what he was supposed to do. So a woman, but that's the only place in the Bible where they had a woman in, a, in, a, in authority. It's the only place. But like I said, it's just like today. Women are doing the same thing. They're getting the children to church because the man in the house just won't do it. A lot of men are that way. You'll see, you'll see more women in church with their kids than you see 
men and kids without the mother in church. You hardly ever see men with their children in the church without the mother. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be the mother that's there in church with their children, with her children, while the husband is either fishing, deer hunting, watching football, whatever it may be. A lot of times the woman has to take the place of the man. But the Lord never meant it that way. Like I said, man, it is our responsibility to do these things, not the woman. It says right here, to be keepers at home. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be married. He wants you to have babies. He wants you to, be, to love your husbands. He wants you to be keepers at home. Women, God never meant for you to work. In Genesis, when he told a man, you will till the ground, he was talking to the man. He didn't say, Adam and Eve, or him and her. He said, man, you'll till the ground for the sin you've committed. Men are to work, not women. Now, there, this is hard for a lot of Christian women today. And there's going to be a teaching here a little further down. We'll show why men, women don't work. But I'm just giving that right now to show you, hey, only the man is to work, not the woman. Now, and Jody, and, and, not, and with us two, we have no children. So she's not a mother, and she works because she wants to. She don't work because I, I tell her she needs to work for us to make it. I don't depend for Jody for us to make it. If I'm depending on Jody for us to pay our bills, my eyes are definitely in the wrong place. My eyes are on the Lord for us to make it. But I'm just showing my wife does work, but we don't have she don't have any children. But right here, keepers of the home, it says to take care of the children. You take you take care of your husband and you take care of your children. I used the verse last week on that. Women, you take care of your husband and you take care of your children and you take care of the house. That's for the woman. There's no such thing as women being independent. Women today, that's what they want. They want to be independent. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 12. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is four above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So what he's saying here is this is why... Women, you don't have to work. The man is supposed to take care of you. And right here it says you're supposed to be content with what your husband can give you. A lot of times women want more than what the husband can give. So what happens? He's working seven days a week. The Bible teaches the man works six days a week. A man needs one day of rest every week. That's what the Lord teaches us. So man, if you're working seven days a week and you get sick, don't blame God. He made these bodies. He said, man, you work six days a week. Because the body that I made, the body that you have, is made to work six days a week, not seven. But right here, Sean, women, be content with whatever your husband can give you. Be content with it, right? It's saying it right here. Be content with it. Don't waste his money. You got women out there that got to have a hundred pair of shoes. They have to have expensive jewelry. That's wasting your husband's money. That's material things that have no, have nothing to do with Christianity. We're going to read a word. We're going to read the word of God tonight, and this is God's word. Women, take your the, take the money that your husband makes, and don't use it in vain. And don't tell him you want more and more and more. And then you say, "Well, I guess I have to go to work," because you want to keep up with the Joneses. Then the woman goes and works, so they can keep up with the Joneses. Is that biblical? Is that Christian? No, it's not. I hear many marriages where their husband and wife, they say, well, we can't make it on one income. Well, you know why you're not making it on one income? Because you don't have your eyes on the Lord. If you got your eyes on the Lord, you're walking with the Lord, the Lord will give you everything you need. And He gives you your wants. Maybe not all the time, but He does give wants also. But yes, when you're saying we cannot make it on one income, you're saying that God can't take care of you. Because God said, man, you will work. And I will supply you what you need to take care of your family. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear what I'm, this is? This is what this is saying. Don't push him to where he gets sick. Because he's working seven days a week now. First Timothy 6.6. 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. When you're content with what your husband can bring you, supply you, give you, it is great gain. That's what, this is the word of God. 
I'm content with what I have. You know, there's people out there who live in mansions and have how many cars and how many motorcycles and how many boats. And, but I don't look at that and think, well, I ain't got nothing. I could look at that and say, man, we don't have anything. I could, but I don't. Be content with what we have. We're walking with the Lord in this family. This is what we have. I'm content with what we have. I don't look at the Joneses and see what they have and feel like I need to keep up with them. First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible because it's a lot easier to understand. It says, In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then even some refuse to obey the good news. Your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over to by observing your pure and reverent lives. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with your beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. And this is for you women. You know, forget about the, this all this jewelry stuff. If you're trying to look beautiful with jewelry, clothes, makeup, Thor said, forget about that. He says, show your inner beauty. This is what he's saying right here. That's what you need to show. Show your inner beauty, your gentleness, your quiet spirit, which is, which is so precious to God. If that's precious to God, if God says, that's what's precious to me, wouldn't you want to do it? Wouldn't, wouldn't you want to show your inner beauty? Because that's precious to him. He just said it. So women, what's on TV, these models, these skinny models, that's not where it's at. Where it's at is right here. It's your inner, inner beauty. That's why I don't, my grandchild, my granddaughter, she's in pageants, but I'm totally against pageants. Because all you're doing, all that is doing is showing my daughter, is, showing, is teaching her that she's either prettier than the other girl, or she has more talent than the other girl, or she dresses prettier than the other girl. That's what that's teaching. Is that Christian? No, that's not. So you think, man, Jesse, you're going a little too far. No, I'm not. That is what my granddaughter is learning in these passions, to be better than the other. That's wrong. The Lord right here says, forget all this beauty on the outside. He said, show your beauty on the inside. Verse 5, this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They trusted God and accepted the authority of their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed, like I just said a while ago, for, for instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him Lord. You are the daughters of Sarah. But anyway, I wanted to read these other verses above it. Women, beauty on the outside does not impress the Lord. You might impress men, but it doesn't impress the Lord. And a Christian man, a truly born-again Christian man, he doesn't look what's on the outside anyway. A true Christian man is going to look at what's on the inside of you. Do you love the Lord? That's what he's going to be looking for. Women really don't have a, a, a problem with authority. They really don't. Women, if the government says something, you obey. If that street sign out there says 30 miles an hour, oh, you might go a little bit go over it, but you're not going to speed like 60 because you're going to obey it. Your boss at work, for those women who do work, you submit, you have an easier time submitting to your boss than you do your own husband. Is that right or is that wrong? You're submitting for money because he pays you. And that's why you submit to him, because of money. If you have an easier time submitting to your boss at work and you give, a, you give your husband a hard time, especially if he's a godly man. So I'm showing you women... You really don't have a problem with submission. And most of the time, most of the time, the man that you work for, most of the time, he's lost. He's wicked. And you're submitting to him instead of your God-fearing husband at home. I just want you all to think about that. The, way, the devil wants you this way. The devil wants you to be independent. He doesn't want you to be, he doesn't want you to be under the, your husband's authority. You know why? Because for one... What I taught you last week about the chain of command, God's chain of command, you break it. When you don't submit to your husband, you're breaking God's chain of command. And anything that you can break of God, that's what the devil wants from you. 
Now, I'm telling you these things, a lot of these things you didn't know, but now you do. When you were blind to them before, it was not sin. But now the Lord is opening your eyes with the scriptures. I'm reading the scriptures to you. Now his, your eyes are opening to what you're doing. Now it's up to you that if you're doing it, it's up to you if you fall on your knees and repent. It's hard for the two to be one. In Genesis, where I started from, it's hard for two to be one when you're trying to be independent from him. I don't need you. So the women's part, which mainly I've been doing last week and this week, it's tough. If you do it with the right heart attitude toward the Lord, then it's not hard. If you're looking at, your, at that man, if you're looking at that man and you're saying, that's what I need to submit to, well, yeah, you're going to have a hard time. But forget the man. When he says something, okay, Lord, and not calling him Lord, but just saying, okay, Lord, and you listen to your husband. Because that is God's will. And I'm getting ready to get on the husband now. But women, I've given you all the verses what the Lord has for you and what he wants you to do. Now, let me just say this. Wives, maybe you, you're thinking, well, he's not good enough for me to listen to, to submit to. Matthew 7, 3. It says, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in your brother's eye, but considers not the beam that is in thy own eye? Now, this is to the husband. Husbands, you can't expect your wife to be submissive to you when you're not walking with the Lord. You want her to do her part as submitting to your husband because that's what God says. But it's kind of hard for you, for her to expect that. It's kind of hard for you to expect that from her when you're not submitting to the Lord yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Now, women, back to you. The Bible didn't say only submit to your husband if. There's no if there. Whether he's doing walk with the Lord or not, you submit to him. He didn't say only submit if they're doing this or doing that. It just says, wives, submit to your husbands. Period. That is it. But wives, do not, do not. Well, if you're not doing that part, then I'm not doing my part. But husbands, it would be foolish of us to expect our wives to submit to us, and we're not even submitting to the Lord. Joshua twenty four fifteen, For as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua is taking a stand. To the nation, not just to his house. Joshua said this to the nation of Israel. And that's what we do as men in our house. And if you have a, a relative, a friend, or somebody who wants to move in because they don't have a place to stay, and they don't know the Lord, men, it is our responsibility to tell them, to tell them yeah, you can move in, but let me tell you, this is, this is how it is in my house. We will serve the Lord here. And if this person, relative, or whoever it may be, doesn't want to do it, then they know that they need to go somewhere else. And it doesn't matter who it is. All I have is daughters, but if I had a son, and he's of age, and he wants to come back home, and he's not a Christian, I have to tell him that. I'll have to tell him, well, son, you can move here, but you will serve the Lord in this house, because that's what we do. And that's, that's following the commandments of the Lord. Genesis 3.17, it says, And unto Adam, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, <coughs> of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Now before this happened, God told Adam he had dominion over the earth. Like I said before, Adam was like Jesus. He was without sin. He wasn't the son of God. But he was without sin. And he, God said, you have dominion over the earth. All Adam had to do was speak things. All right? He was not Jesus, don't get me wrong. He was not the son of God, like Jesus is. But, God, but he was perfect. There was no sin. And God said, you have dominion over the earth. But because of what happened, now he's telling them, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. And then you drop down to verse 23, it says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So with those verses right there, it plainly shows, Adam, you are now going to have to work. Again, I have to say it again. He did not say, Adam and Eve, you all have to work. He said, Adam, this is your punishment. You're going to have to work for a living. Second Thessalonians 3.10 
For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, now listen, neither should he eat. He. If the man does not work for a living, then he should not eat. The Lord's going to take care of the women and the children. But right here he's saying, he. If he doesn't work, he doesn't eat. And that's why I pass these guys under these bridges or at lights that are holding these signs. They're not working. God said, if, if you don't work, you don't eat. To the man. If you don't work, you don't eat. So I'm not giving money to people who, to men who are out there at the lights begging for money. Okay? Now, you got Christians who say, well, you're supposed to help. No, no. Read the scriptures. There's people, yes, we're supposed to help. But then there's people who we, we are not to help. If I help them, it's going to be with the Word of God. I'm not giving them money. 1 Timothy 5.8 But if any provide not for his own, speaking about the men, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Meaning he's worse than an unbeliever because he knows, we know the Word of God. We believers, men, we know the Word of God. We know we're supposed to supply and take care of our family. And if we don't, he says we're worse than an infidel. That's us. That's to us men. He has denied the faith. It does. It's not talking about salvation either. You cannot. You can deny the faith by conduct as well as by words, by neglecting the duties of the family. That's how you can deny the faith. Don't take care of your family, and you're de denying the faith. You're you're denying the responsibility of the man. That's why he says he hath denied the faith. In the Bible, there's no such thing as Mr. Mom. There's no such thing as Mr. Mom, okay? We, as it's getting more and more where the man stays home and the woman goes and work. You see that. It's happening more and more. That's not biblical. We've got to get away from what we see on TV. We've got to get away from that. The world is getting further and further and further away from God. So don't use the TV to show you how to live because they're going to get away from the Lord. So there's no such thing as Mr. Mob. Me, I am physically hurt. Physically hurt. I'm not working. Well, Jody, Jody has a good job, so why should I work? No, I'm not working because I am unable to work. That's why I'm not working. I'm not Mr. Mom, though. I am un unable to work. And even though I am unable to work and Jody makes the money, Jody is not the one supplying what we need in this house. Jody still knows that what we have is from the Lord. She's not thinking, well, I'm the one who makes the money, so I'm the one who should say what goes around here. As you know, women, they have women who do that. If I make more than you, then I have say so. Or if I'm or you're not working at all, then I got all say so. That's happening. That's not of the Lord. Even though I am unable to work physically, I am still head of this house. And Jody, my wife, who is a Christian, obeys that. She could be very easily do what other women do and say and just say or just start doing it and Wanting to be the boss. Since she's the one bringing home the money, then she's the boss. Well, I'm going to, I say what goes on around here because I'm the one bringing in the money. She, ver she could very easily fall into that, but she doesn't because she knows the Word of God. And why does she know the Word of God? Because her husband is teaching her. And I'm not bragging. I'm trying to show you husbands, teach your wives. Teach your wives. In some cases where the wife was a Christian and the husband wasn't, okay. Husband, you grow with your wife, but then there's going to be a time when you go above what she knows because it's your responsibility. It's good for the wife to know. It's good for her to read the Word. But as you become a Christian, you should get further and further up ahead in knowing what the Word of God says. You have to. If you're going to lead your house, you have to. Just like when, when Jody, she did not like the church when we first got married, she did not like the church where we were going, and I understood why, so we left. But then I said, okay, Lord, where do you want us to go? Well, the Lord, I didn't feel him leading us anywhere. But it was my responsibility to keep feeding Jody the Word of God. And this is how my CD ministry got started. Because we started having church here at home, just me and her. I still got a sermon together to feed her, because that's my responsibility. Because the Lord didn't lead me anywhere, I didn't just say, well, you know. No, I stayed in the Word, and I taught my wife the Word. Men, that's what we do.
Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Like I've said before, if, you, if we get into an argument, whether I'm right or wrong, I need to make things right with my wife. And the Lord has dealt with me many times on that. We get in a fight, I get in that car, and by the time I reach the corner, the, Lord, the Lord's already spoke to me. He's either, he's either going to tell me, you're right, but so what? Go back and make things right with your wife. You weren't wrong, but go back and make things right. If I have to apologize, there is no pride in the Christian walk. We know that, right? There is no pride in Christian walk. So if I need to come and apologize to Jody, and I know I haven't, and the Lord has shown me I'm not wrong, but He also showed me I'm the head of this house. And I should not let us go to bed at night without settling whatever we're arguing about. And then there's times when I get to the corner, and the Lord will plainly show me, you were totally wrong. <laughs> okay, Lord, okay. I come back and I apologize. But it's the man's responsibility, it's our responsibility to make things right before we go to bed. If things are not right before we go to bed, the Lord is holding us responsible. It is our responsibility. That's part of being the head of the house. So, men, you get in an argument with your wife, you better settle it before you go to bed. This is the word. Ephesians. That's the word of God. Settle it before you go to bed. But let me say this also. Women, now that you know this, don't think, well, I'm never going to apologize because he's going to have to apologize to me. <laughs> don't think that way. Know this. Know this. The Lord knows your heart. He knows your heart. And if you're doing that, you don't want to do that. Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives. This love right here means agape love. Just like Christ loves us. And how many times we've, have we failed Him? How many times have we failed the Lord, but yet He loves us? This is an agape love. So right here he's saying, husband, agape your wives. He's saying, husband, I want you to love your wife just like I love the church. And we have failed them all the time. We fail them continually, but He still loves us. And He gave His life for the church. So husbands, we are to love our wives as Christ loves the church. Now, you yourselves know how many times you have failed God. I know it. Y'all know it. And what, he does he, and what does He do? He forgives us. So we got to do the same thing with our wives. They might fail us over and over and over, but we just got to keep on forgiving them over and over and over. Because right here it says, A husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. That's very important. Husbands, <laughs> if you can't love your wife as a wife, then you better love her as a sister in the Lord. If you can't love her as a wife, then love her as a sister. Because she's your sister in the Lord, spiritually. Or, if you can't do that, then what's the Bible say? To love your enemies. So if your wife is like your enemy, then you're going to love her anyway. You still got to love her no matter what. There it is. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> I mean, the Lord, the Lord said it. If you married your enemy, then it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's on you, but you got to love her. If she's your enemy, you got to love her. So husbands, love your wife. You think about how Christ loves us. You think how much the Lord has loved you. You think about how much He has forgiven you for the things you've done and how He's still forgiving you of things you're doing now. And then... Tell yourself, okay, that's the way I need to love my wife. Amen? Now, Jesus, as being our head, as the man's, Jesus is our head, do we argue with the Lord? We don't argue with our head. And it's just something that I threw in there, so maybe, they're, maybe the wives heard that. So I'm going to go to 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with his washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Okay, verse 25. Just as Christ, just as the church looks up to the Lord for everything, the church, our churches today, we should look to the Lord for everything, right? Okay, that's what he's saying here. 
the wife and the kids should look up to us. Just like we look up to the church, our wives and our children should look up to us because we are the head. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This right here, teach it. That's how we get cleansed. That's how we get washed. By us teaching the word. That's how we cleanse and wash. And in verse 27, it says, is, He is to prepare his wife as Christ is preparing the church. Okay, do you understand what the verses that I read and what they mean? What I'm saying here? And then we go to verse uh, 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. I really don't know no man who hates himself. I mean, truly hates himself. So the Lord is saying, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth himself loveth, loveth his wife. Not that we're in love with ourselves. I take care of myself for the Lord. Because what, are, what, are, what is our bodies now? The temple. Right? So I need to take care of this temple because God lives in it. So that's why I love my body. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord of the church. So how do we nourish and cherish our bodies? Through the word of God. So man, this is how we do it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 and 33. In all you do, I want you to be free from worry. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. But a married man can't do that so well. He has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. <clears throat> so we got a big responsibility here. Not only do we have to take the responsibility of supplying for our wives, but we also have the responsibility of, of uh, learning the Word of God. Where married men, they can spend their whole time learning the Word of God. I mean, single men. They can spend all their time learning the Word of God because they don't have a wife to attend to or children. So the Lord is saying, men, you need to please your wife. Are you going to please your wife by being bossy? That's why I say Head of the house does not mean the boss. We got some big responsibility. Like I said before, women, if the Lord gave me a choice, I'd be a woman. Because if all I have to do is submit to a man, to my husband, I can do that. Because the man's got a lot more responsibility to, than, than the wife does. Colossians 3.19 Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. One of those things is husbands... And I have to say it because it does happen. Loving your wife is not hitting her. Hitting your wife is not showing her love. So if there's any men out there and you're physically abusing your wife, you need to fall on your knees and repent and ask God for forgiveness. But this is not the way to show your love to your wife is by hitting her. And these are for men who do hit their wives. It says not to be bitter against them. Do not be bitter against your wife. Well, I don't like it because she, forgive her, forgive her. And do not be bitter. Whatever it may be, do not be bitter against your wife. This is a, this is a command from the Lord. There's some good things. Songs 1, 2. Men, the, the Lord's telling us how to love our wives. One, don't hit them. Another way, he says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. Now the Lord is saying for the woman to kiss your wife. Because kissing your wife is better than wine. And there are some men, believe it or not, there are some men, they just don't like kissing. They don't like smooching and stuff like that. Women like it. Most women like it. But you got a lot of men who don't. But right here the Lord is saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Talking about the husband. For thy love is better than wine. This is good for women. Husband, you want to please your wife? Kiss her. It's biblical. It's right here. I just read it to you. Kiss your wife. Psalms 113. A bundle of myrrh is my well-beloved unto me. He shall lay all night between my breasts. This is the word of God. I'm reading the word of God, right? This is not hustler. This is not a sex book. The Lord said, Husband, 
cuddle with your wife. And it says it right here. He shall lay all night between her breasts. This is pleasing to a woman. The Lord knows what women like. And the Lord knows he has to tell us. And he's telling us right here. So cuddle. Cuddle with your wife. Kiss your wife and cuddle her. Don't think you're too manly to do this. This is good for the wife. You want to make your wife happy and please her? Do these things. Songs 2.6 His left hand is under my head and his right hand doeth embrace me. Like I said, this is not a sex book. The Lord is just, just telling us what, what women like. If he says to do it, it's because he knows this is what like women like. So he's telling us men, because sometimes we're a little slow. He's saying, look, man, this is, do this. This is what women like. Do this to your wife. Amen? Amen. We are not too manly to do these things. Some men, they want to be manly. They want to be tough and manly. Well, okay, you won't be that way. We'll be that way out there. But when you get with your wife, forget that manliness. Forget that manliness and cuddle and kiss your wife. Lay with her. I don't have a problem with this. I can obey these. These, these would be easy for me. <laughs> but leave your manly women, Christian women, born again Christian women. What's manly to them is a man who fears the Lord. That's what manly is to a woman. If she sees her husband fears the Lord and is a man of God, that's what, ple- that's what pleases them. Because they know as long as he's that way, the Lord's over that house. The Lord is protecting. Amen?